Okay, community members, good e welcome to our online forum, the continuation in our series. And this evening we are talking about, I am what I eat. We are talking about food, nutrition, and my mental health. Um, this series that we, are, that we are doing leads up to our annual conference in October. It's October 8th. And it, the theme for this year's conference is the environment and me. And one of the things that we've been concerned about is how the foods that we eat as aspects of our external environment impact our mental health. That is how the foods we eat impact our, our mental health, which impacts on and affects the choices we make, the decisions are the, the decisions we make and the consequences of those decisions that we have to live with. And so this evening, we are pleased to have three fantastic people. I have never met any of them. I'm seeing them for the <laughs> first time on a camera, but I look forward to hearing what they have to say. And I expect that they will have a whole lot of information and knowledge to share with us. Um, it also occurred to me in, uh, in a conversation that I had a little earlier with, with one of our, um, our attendees that when we planned this evening's event, I did not quite realize that the subject of food is, pre is coming immediately before the July 4th weekend. And so, there is a significance because everybody's going to be wanting to eat barbecues and burgers and hot dogs and all sorts of food between tomorrow and over the weekend. And so I am sure our panelists, which are two, two registered dietitians and a mental health professional, they will tell us about the foods that we eat, how they will impact our mental health, and by extension, how they affect our moods, how they affect who we are and what we say and what we do and how we behave. So um, without, so I'd like us to, um, I'd like us to take a moment. So our, our, our presenters are Gloria Bent, um, Eddie Saskowitz, and Javon Siri. So our program for this evening is what I just did. We will have a moment of silence where we will where we will bring to mind those who have died. And then we will introduce Eddie. Then after Eddie, we will go into Gloria. And after Gloria, then we'll go into Javon. And hopefully there is time for questions and answers, questions. And uh, you guys can ask your questions. So I'd like us to take a moment in silence. And let's think for a moment about these people who have died. Let's also think for a moment about those many black and people of color who died from COVID-19. And let's take a moment to think about those in our communities, those who we know who may have died from suicide. Thank you. So for this, for this evening, we have a few community agreements. We ask that you keep your microphones muted, no photographs of the screen, be respectful even if you disagree with someone. We will use a chat box at the top right hand on the screen for questions. Please leave your questions in that chat box and indicate if for a specific speaker, or if a general question, 
and I will read it out. And at the end of this event, I will um, I will share the a PDF of all the slides and the recordings with everyone who's 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 registered. Our first presenter is Eddie Sas Sakowitz. Eddie Sakowitz is a registered dietitian at the, at the New York City Department of Health and Mental Hygiene. His role involves implementation of the Eat Well, Play Hard Champion initiative with low income communities. The program provides hands on classes for children and families, as well as mentoring for teachers to conduct nutrition education in classrooms. He graduated from Brooklyn College with a master's of science degree in nutrition and is part of the Latinos and Hispanic member interest group within the Academy of Nutrition and Diet Dietetics. So community members, I'd like us to welcome Eddie. Eddie, over to you. Hi, everybody. Hey. <laughs> um, I'm so happy, happy, happy to, uh, to be here. So thank you for having me. Um, yes, my name is Eddie Sakowitz. Um, I always like to say or put forth my pronouns are he, him. Uh, I'm a queer Latino, born and raised in the Bronx. Uh, well, all of the Bronx, Kingsbridge and, and Throgs Neck, if, if you're familiar with you know, neighborhoods. Um, and so today I'm gonna briefly talk about two major things. One being the COVID-19 emergency food distribution programs and the viability of canned and frozen foods uh, in eating a nutrition meal. Uh, any links or anything like that will be posted uh, at the end. So that way, if you wanna find out more resources or additional information, uh, you'll have them. Uh, the first thing I wanna discuss is our website, uh, which is Get Food NYC. And I love that website in particular because it lets you know of all the food um, resources you can go to that offer free food um, at food pantries or more fresh prepared grab and go food from uh, schools. Um, the Department of Education is currently offering free meals daily for any New Yorkers and no uh, registration or ID is required. So you can go in, pick up meals, uh, multiple meals for the day um, without any questions in terms of, of uh, eligibility or registration. Um, and it's great because uh, it's offered um, Monday through Friday. Uh, all the meals uh, don't have any pork. They offer halal and vegetarian options. Um, some general rules about it uh, is that there is no dining space. So if you go, just make sure that uh, you bring stuff to not only take it with you or um, with the mindset that you will have to eat it elsewhere because they're not offering uh, in, room, in room dining. Um, parents and guardians may pick up food for their children. So you don't have to bring your children or nieces or nephews. Um, no fried food is offered or served in the menus, as well as no artificial flavors, colors, or sweeteners. Um, the hours of operation are, uh, like I said, Monday through Friday from 7.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. More specifically, though, it's uh, 7.30 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. for children and families, and then it's 11.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. for adults. Um, in addition, on that same website, you'll find out uh, source resources in terms of if you need emergency uh, SNAP funding or um, as well as farmers market locations uh, and maps and other resources in terms of uh, where you can get free food. The next thing I want to discuss is the viability of canned and frozen foods and eating a nutritious meal. Uh, and the reason why is specifically because if, depending if you go to a food pantry, sometimes you'll get a lot of shelf stable foods and that's okay, and that's great to eat too. Um, but if you do end up shopping, these are just some things you want to keep in mind. While we would all realistically love to eat veggies, fresh veggies from a garden uh, all year round, realistically, that's not gonna happen um, for several reasons. Um, either you don't have the time, living space, um, funds, or if you're just like me and gardening isn't your thing. Um, as much as I try, I just don't have that green thumb. Um, so it's important to know that whatever situation you're in, canned or frozen produce can be helpful, especially during these times. Uh, some tips on what to look out for is canned fruit uh, that's in its own juice instead of a syrup. Uh, and it'll say that on the label. 
uh, canned vegetables with low sodium or no salt added, uh, and be sure to rinse those uh, before eating. Uh, the Department of Health, if you do go out, you know, to uh, farmers markets and you do purchase things, they do offer this thing called Health Bucks, which is where if you spend five dollars, uh, if you have an EBT card, that is, uh, you'll get two dollars back to spend on uh, fruits and vegetables. Um, in terms of, of the the freshness of of uh, canned foods and fresh fruits, I mean frozen fruits, um, they are more processed than if you were to get fresh produce from the supermarket. However, though, most times when it's packaged, it's packaged at its peak. And so um, if you look for those markers in terms of low or no sodium and no syrup in terms of uh, the fruits, then you're kind of in the right direction of um, what to consume to create like a, a balanced nutritious meal. Um, if you do purchase fresh foods, you can save money by buying whole fruits and vegetables instead of ones uh, that are pre-cut. So usually you'll see them, if you go to the supermarket, you'll see you know, uh, a stand of avocados or um, uh, lemons, limes, or mangoes, and then they'll be right next to it, sometimes uh, pre-cut ones. And of course that costs more. Um, leafy greens and berries tend to go bad quicker. So be sure to use those first if you do purchase them or you do get that. Um, and root vegetables like winter squash, carrots, and potatoes keep uh, keep longer, so if you can get those, then get them. Uh, general tips, uh, choose more affordable proteins like beans, lentils, eggs, and canned fish. If you have the time, uh, dried beans can be great, but of course that requires additional cooking time and prep. Uh, but they are cheaper, and so that way you can get a lot more for your money. Uh, most foods, and this is possibly my favorite thing to do, can be portioned into Ziploc bags and frozen. Uh, I do this with my bread. So if you get, uh, sometimes at food pantries, you'll receive bread. Um, and sometimes depending on where you go, the bread might be on its way out. Or even if you go to the supermarket and you buy in bulk, you buy several loaves because you don't want to make frequent trips, um, then you can freeze them and then either uh, put them in the oven or a toaster to reheat them. But just in general, uh, if you do get a lot of food or if you do buy food, uh, you can save money uh, if that's an option to buy in bulk and then freeze to uh, keep it fresh. Um, and lastly, mo make the most of what you buy by picking ingredients you can use in multiple recipes. And what that essentially looks like is if you're going to make, if you're going to use black beans for one uh, recipe, you might want to make extra and then save the, the remaining uh, beans to put in a soup, you know, uh, and that way you kind of save time in terms of preparation, but also you can save money because you, you can, you know, use the ingredients for multiple things. Uh, also with broccoli in particular, I love uh, use buying the whole stock or getting the whole stock because in that case I can uh, eat the, the, cut up the stock and add it to soup or salads or stir fry. Um, the most important thing though, while the, the nutrients and vegetables can vary depending on how they're processed or how they're prepared, the most important thing is that uh, you eat them whenever and wherever possible. Um, especially during this time, you do what you can when you can. And so uh, I always like to stress that if, if you know you go to pantries or if you have canned foods and frozen foods and that's all that's available for you, that's okay. Um, and that you can still make it work. Um, if you wanna stay in touch with the Department of Health, we have uh, several different platforms on all social media. Uh, we have it on Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter and Instagram, and you can keep in touch in terms of our other programs. We have this thing called Fellow Farmers Market, where if you want to uh, get nutrition education and also uh, part participate in those health bucks, uh, we typically set up in um, farmers markets to be able to do this. Um, I will post the links in the comments. And that wraps up my bit. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Very yes, much. Yes. Thank you again. I, I, I noticed that the new way of, of, of applauding is is doing this. Yes, so, yes. So yeah, this is the new the new way of applauding when we're doing online on online on you know because because if everybody's got their mic their mics muted, I mean, hey. So thank you very much, Eddie. Yeah. Um, actually, I do like. I do like some of what you were talking about because especially about 
frozen and canned foods. Um, there, I know, I remember that there was once a, uh, a situation that uh, food pantries were giving out canned foods that had been expired, or that there were cans that were lined with BHP, which is a, a, a preservative to keep the foods fresh, but it was also a carcinogen. So just hang on, and we can probably talk about that a little later on. Um, yeah, I'll answer any questions at the end. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to just ask about health box, but let's leave that for the end. Okay? All right. So um, our next presenter is um, somebody that I, that I met quite by accident. But um, she is, she turned out to be a really engaging person that I like, enjoy talking with. So I'd like to introduce you guys to Miss Gloria Bent. Um, Gloria's bio is actually really, really quite um, extensive. So I will just read the first couple of sentences. Um, Gloria is a New York City based registered dietitian and the Associate Director of New York City's Health and Hospitals, North Central Bronx Hospital, and developed many innovative health programs focused on weight loss and healthy lifestyle modi modifications. In addition to her qualifications, she obtained a certificate in adult adolescent weight management. She hosts nutrition education sessions and speaks at farmers markets and health fairs around the Bronx. She developed a picky eaters group at NCBH following many parents' concerns about their children's eating habits. Additionally, she is involved in the bariatric program at Jacoby Medical Center, which was featured on News 12 in the Bronx and in newspapers such as Street Hype newspaper. Originally from Jamaica, West Indies, she received a degree from Jamaica College of Art, Science and Technology and was awarded a Pan American World Health Organization scholarship. She studied community nutrition in Trinidad and Tobago, Barbados, Antigua, and in her home country, Jamaica. So community members, I'd like to introduce you now to Ms. Gloria Bent. Gloria. Hi, good, every Hi, good evening, everyone. How are you today? How are you all today? I guess people are doing well. They may not be able to answer you. But... <laughs> Hi, my name is Gloria Bent, and I've been in the, in the service for the past over 30 years, focused on nutrition and wellness. I am a registered dietitian, and I got to nutrition and management. And to, this afternoon, we are going to discuss about nutrition and food access we're going through a very stressful time now with this global pandemic and it affected many areas of our lives and food is very very important nutrition management is very important for optimal nutrition and wellness during covid 19 to protect yourself and family we emphasize wearing masks Washing your food and vegetables, as Eddie has talked about, about the food and vegetables, we have to make sure we wash them properly. We wear our masks, practice social distance to just maintain that um, pre prevent for prevention. I'm going to start, what is healthful eating? It differs in meaning from person to person. Factors contributing to difference in meaning may include the scientific advance, in the field of nutrition, personal and cultural consideration, accepted standards of cultural eating. Throughout the history, term healthful eating has differed in meaning from person to person. Healthful eating differ from person to person, like, for example, scientific advance in nutrition, personal and accepted, um, accepted standards. Healthful eating. While we talk about healthful eating, we talk about balanced diet, balanced nutritional diet, organic food, cutting down on fried food, junk food, eating only fresh and natural food, diet that promotes optimum health. So when we talk about that, while any of these can be used to describe a healthful eating, the term healthful eating means beneficial to our mind and our body. 
It is the key. Food and eating is the key. We cannot function in life unless we have, we eat well. Um, health food, it describes that someone who creates a good health. For example, apples, yogurt, fresh air, eat instead of doing the junk food, drinking water. It's, it's very, very important and accepted standards of healthful eating, differ, it differs from person to person. Um, so what's the benefits of adequate nutrition? What's the benefit of adequate nutrition? The benefits of good nutrition go beyond, it's go beyond the maintaining a healthy body weight. It reduces the risk of certain disease, diabetes, high blood pressure, stroke, some form of cancer, and osteoporosis. As we know, the Bronx is the highest in obesity. Why? We need to start doing healthful eating. It also reduces high blood pressure, lower high cholesterol, improve our immune system. So we eat well and we can prevent, preventing coming on like the COVID-19. Improve your ability to recover from illness and Injuries. So if you are sick, you know that you have to eat the nutrients to maintain a healthy eating habit. Making healthy food choices, you can go to my plate icon, is the best guide to help like adolescents, adults, to help everyone have a healthy diet. That's my plate. As you go further on, I'll show you copy. You can go to the website www.dc.com for healthy my plate. Also, why are we, why everyone always talk about healthy eating, healthy eating? Are we doing that? Proteins, I'm going to talk about proteins, carb. We know that proteins are the basic building blocks. Proteins build and repair tissues and helps to fight against infection. So the protein foods include our seafood, lean meat, poultry, eggs, peas, soy products, and salted nuts and seeds. Protein is also for, for found in um, plant. You have some plant-based protein. The cater for those who don't eat meat. You can get protein from like rice and some vegetables. Carbohydrates, those are the main body's source of energy. Those are the main source of energy. So when we think about our carbohydrates, we have our fruits, vegetables, dairy, grain fruits, all contain carbohydrates. So if we are doing the carbohydrate, the sweetness like the sugar, the honey, the syrup, foods with high glycemic context like the candy, the soft drinks, the cookies, the contain carbohydrates, those food can raise your blood sugar. Those food can let you gain weight, extra weight. Okay, so then you go to your fats. You have the essential fats. These contribute to body function, but are not made by the body. You must consume them. You need those food. But another thing, do not over overeat. Foods that contain fats are like the dairy products, the meats, the poultry, and these absorb the fat-soluble vitamins. The fat-soluble vitamins are A, D, E, K, a D. Those are the fat-soluble vitamins. Healthy eating plan. As a healthy eating plan, you want to make a healthy eating plan, make sure you use your lean meat, fruits and vegetables, whole grains, brown rice, Wheat, whole grain, brown rice, bulgur, instead of the white rice, bulgur. Why? Because remember, the food is broken down. Digestion starts in the mouth. The food is broken down to glucose. So the extra stores that fat. So it's best to use the foods with fiber that slowly broke down and the fiber help with constipation. Higher in healthy and fat tips we should reduce our sodium intake. So it's very, very um, thing about the healthy diets. A lot of people saying, oh, what is a healthy diet? What give me a meal plan? I want a meal plan to lose a weight. No, to get a meal plan, it depends also on your physical, on your activity level. 
um, what exercise you do, not just do a meal plan like that. So it's very, very important to take into consideration all your eating. So there's also consequences of healthy eating, of unhealthy eating habits. What are unhealthy eating habits? We ask ourselves the question, so what are unhealthy eating habits? Poor eating habits, under or overeating. So those are unhealthy eating habits. Poor eating habits, you're not getting enough of the healthy foods that we need to meet our nutritional daily needs of eating too many foods and drinks which are low in fiber, high in fat, high in salt, and high in sugar. Unhealthy eating habits can be a result of eating disorders. So the eating disorders can be like anorexia, bulimia, so the consequence of all this obesity, you get obesity, the consequence of this healthy eating habits, obesity. And the cause obesity can be caused, can get death from obesity. All causes of death, hypertension, high cholesterol, dyslipidemia, high triglyceride, high fat in the diet, liver function, type 2 diabetes, type 2 diabetes. So it's very coronary heart, heart disease, gallbladder disease, osteoarthritis, sleep opinion, and other breathing difficulties. So if we just start eating healthy, it is very, very important. Low quality of life. Low quality of life. Think about that. Mental illness. Clinical depression, anxiety, and other mental disorders, body pain all over because we are eating so unhealthy eating habits. Say, for example, you eat a high fat meal, a chicken, some like say, oh, I love chicken wings fried every day. And you keep eating it, eating it, eating it. You're, so you're pouring that fat. If you have oil at home, that extra oil, do you pour it down the sink? No, because you're saying that your landlord going to give you props said, oh, so now what do you do? You have to do what? You have to hurry up and do, don't do that. So that's the same thing with our body. So the consequences of the anorexia, and you know what is anorexia? The effects of anorexia are both short and long term. Anorexia comes with immediate physical function, immediate those eating disorders like anorexia are at a risk of developing osteo, osteoporosis, a disease where the density of the bones start to decrease. Um, so the next one, we can talk about the healthy eating plan. The healthy eating plan, you can go to myplate.com. You get that plate. It shows you where the, show you where you have the plate your your dear your dairy product your fruits your vegetables your carbs and also 30 minutes of exercise every day every day try to drink six or more cups of water it's very very important getting a balanced meal to accomplish this use my plate as a guide keep a food diary of everything you eat and drink for one week. Pay attention to serving sizes. Try to include all food groups, review your list. You don't need have to get the recommended daily amount, but you get the, at least get it for a week. Um, how much is enough? Look at the, like the mouse, that's the size that's like one medium potato. Deck of cards, three ounces of meat. Tennis ball, one cup of pasta. So four dice is one, one ounce of cheese. Um, some people like large portion, especially if you're in, in the overweight size. Try to cut your portion sizes. Instead of having the chicken leg and the thigh, you just have half. And make sure you have your complete vegetables with it because at least you have a balanced meal to get the nutrients. The folic Folic acid, I'm just going to give you a little tip about folic acid. Folic acid treat depression, insomnia, irritability, and dementia. Folic acid, you can get folic acid in green leafy vegetables. Grape seed extract, these can symptoms, it's essentially non-toxic. Also, you can have um, peppermint, it treat headaches and chronic pain. Thiamine B1. Ah, uh, that's depression, psychosis, 
so this once we have a balanced meal so the vitamins and minerals these are very important so you have the vitamin c calcium vitamin d zinc selenium iron vitamin b folic acid vitamin a magnesium in times like these we need to make sure we eat food that have these nutrients in it food access when you go out shopping or sometime try to pick up some of these vitamins but before you pick them up make sure you consult with a healthcare professional to identify which vitamin and which mineral is appropriate for you you have to make sure you consult your medical professional what can you do ensure that what can you do to make sure you have a healthy meal ensure that half of your plate is vegetables for adequate fiber you need fiber in your body to make sure you're not constipated get an equivalent of two cups or more fruits drink plenty of water six or more cups it's very important to drink water instead of the soda the iced tea it's coming on hot it's very hot so instead of using those iced tea you can make your own iced tea fresh lemon with your tea bag or you can add your fruits to the water if you want flavored water to make it more cost effective because sometimes we are saying we don't have enough money to buy food yet we will go and buy the soda and buy and we can use the water and add the fruits to the water making a very small changes can help to ensure that you're eating a healthy meal. Include good fats like the omega-3 fatty acids. The American Heart Association recommends eating fish, particularly the fatty fish, such as mackerel, lake trout, herring, sardines, tuna, at least twice a week. Better get to get your fiber from foods that supplement. But if you cannot use the supplements such as fiber, you can buy your But It's very important to use the food for the fiber. Eat a balanced meal, you'll get your fiber. Increase your whole food. Instead of white rice, brown rice, bulgur. Okay, lifestyle changes. Make half of your plate. Make half of your plate fruits and vegetables. Start, start activities slowly. Another thing is very important to do your activities. Get your heart pumping at least 60 minutes. You're, be active your way. You can find walk up the stairs. When you park your car, do not take the elevator. You walk up the stairs. Build a network support, call a friend walk, do some dancing. Well, we are practicing social distance, but now we can do it in our home. We can walk, walk up the stairs, walk around, sing, just get, just inhale. And also try to reflect, create a list of your own eating habits. Keep a food diary for a few days that will help you uncover your habits. It is also good to know how you are feeling when you decided to eat, especially eating when you're hungry. Highlights, highlight your habits. What might be leading you to overeat? Highlight what might be leading you to overeat. Always finishing your plate, eating when you're not hungry, eating while standing up. Don't do that. Could lead to eating mindlessly or too quickly. Always eating dessert. Skipping meals, maybe just breakfast. Try not to skip meals. Look at the unhealthy eating habits. The ones you have highlighted, be sure to be identified all the triggers that cause you to engage in these habits. Don't forget to give yourself credit for the things you are doing right, not for the things you are doing wrong. Encouragement sweetens labor. <laughs> Food access and resources. I'm just going to give you this tip because I see Antoine telling me to stop. <laughs> so I am just going to give you just a few tips. Already Eddie had given you a lot, but I have these few tips to give because during this pandemic, we need it and reinforcement is good. Get grocery from a food pantry close by you or cooked from a community kitchen. 
find the closest food pantries and community kitchen. And the website is there for my plate, COVID-19, information about that in New York, City Department of, he of Education committed to making free meals. So please take access for that. Any New Yorker who wants one can get free meals at more than 400 hubs across the city. And also Marco Sierra, he's a district leader. He, his number is 718-654-9200. If you want a meal, you can call and he'll give you all the information because um, I really keep in touch with him because I, I do the outpatient nutrition and wellness. And sometimes patients come individual, don't have meals. So I just, they call him and they got their food. And the next thing about health box, Health box, I got it from the Department of Health, Eddie had said about it, but I have run a wellness program there and you make changes in your weight, so you get the health box as an incentive. Any questions, you can always call me and work at the hospital for information because eating is important. health. Once you have eating right, and it, you will be right. Thank you very much, Gloria. Oh my gosh, this is this is a lot of information. <laughs> let 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 Gloria give, give, give. Yes. Okay, so let everybody give give Gloria a round of applause. Thank you very much, Gloria. And I saw that during the time while I was managing Gloria's slides for her, <coughs> that we may have a number of questions coming in. So um, so before we move on to the questions. Our next presenter is um, is J is Javon Siri. Uh, Javon is uh, the lead psychotherapist and clinical manager with NYC Affirmative Psychotherapy. Javon Siri is is a New York State licensed social worker with over fifteen years of experience working in the social service field. She is currently the lead psychotherapist and clinical manager for NYC Affirmative Psychotherapy, a community-focused sustainable sliding scale mental health practice committed to serving queer communities of color. She believes that the queer, trans, and people of color population is still most vulnerable in our current societal and systemic climate and focuses her efforts on providing support to these major groups both personally and professionally. So community members, I'd like us to welcome Javon Seri. Javon? Yes, hello, 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 hello. Hi, everybody. Um, thank you so much um, just for having me today and for everybody that's part of this conversation. Um, going behind Eddie and Gloria, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just tell you a little bit about how I came into the work that I do and then kind of make the connection between uh, most of what they said and how it affects our, our mental health. So uh, I graduated Virginia State University back in 2002, um, and I went directly to work as a caseworker in several different foster care agencies. Uh, 2013, I graduated with my master's from Hunter College Silberman School of Social Work, and shortly thereafter uh, received my license to practice in the state of New York. For the last two and a half years, I've been in a private practice setting with uh, NYCAP or New York City Affirmative. Um, as Antoine said earlier, we're a community, uh, a community focused sliding scale uh, private practice. We have one of the lowest uh, sliding scale private practices in New York City. Um, we're geared towards uh, queer people of color, uh, people of color and allies so we are not closed off uh we just saw that there was a need in the community and so we wanted to make sure that we were addressing those needs um we are all queer therapists of color which makes us extremely unique as a practice um and it's a very young practice less than three years um out but we have grown uh exponentially in that time so um as a latina and and woman of color it's always been really important for me to make sure that I was giving back since I was a child. Uh, it was always something that my grandmother um, instilled in me that if I have a dollar and somebody needs 50 cents, I give up that 50 cents or I give up the whole dollar and know that it will eventually come back. And so when thinking about mental health, uh, generations before mine and my family 
that that was never really something that was talked about. Also, just like our diets were never talked about. Um, there's some things that I eat in my culture that, uh, you know, were purposely uh, left for us to eat. Um, but now we have, you know, that's our that's part of our culture and our cuisine. So one of the things, and I'll throw it in the chat later, is um, finding a nutritionist is important. Finding a nutritionist that understands your cultural history as well, I just want to put out there, is also very important. Because um, if any of you have ever been to uh, a doctor, I I went one time, I had a, a H. pylori, which is a, a bacteria in my stomach lining. And I had a doctor tell me I needed to eat bland food. And I was like, I don't even know what that is. Like, I, I bland food, like, that's not even like, you know, I can't eat certain things. And so it's really important that when you are looking for medical professionals, mental health professionals, nutritionists, dietitians, that you're also looking for someone who can uh, understand your identity so that they can understand how to create those food plans with you, um, where you're going to actually be of success and not, you know, kind of set yourself up for failure. Um, because it, and, and I appreciate Gloria saying to start slow. Um, because it, it really is, you're reaccustomizing your body, um, after eating for however many years. And so you want to make sure that you're, um, taking your time with the adjustment period. So some of the things that they, uh, mentioned earlier, um, I'm going to reiterate, but I'm going to connect it to, uh, a part of your mental health. So most of us, uh, if not all, um, unless we're essential workers, should have been quarantining at home for the last, at the very least, three to four months. This means our sunlight has shortened. Um, this means that we're eating whatever we have in the house or whatever we're able to get from the grocery store when we're able to get to the grocery store. Um, this means our options are, are lowered. Now, this was all a part of our story before COVID-19 right? When we talk about food deserts and what we have available to us in certain communities. But now with COVID-19, it's just kind of exasperated that. And so I want you to think of your bodies like an expensive car. So whatever that car looks like to you, if it's a Jaguar, if it's a Porsche, whatever car you, you, you said you wanted when you were a kid, we know that as adults, we can't put in regular fuel into an expensive car. We will jam that transmission. We will mess that car up. And so to really keep the car running smoothly and healthy and um, for a long time, we want to put in premium fuel. Think of your body as that Jaguar or that Porsche. And think of the things that we can put in that are premium fuel for ourselves. And most times that comes with our eating. So, for example, low premium foods. So we're talking about processed foods and refined foods. They actually worsen your body's regulation of insulin and promote inflammation. This can help lead to a uh, disorder such as depression. And so we wanna make sure that we're paying attention again to what premium foods we're actually bringing in and what processed foods we're bringing in. So again, cutting out as much processed food as possible, bringing in some higher premium foods. Consuming foods like uh, probiotics have also shown to lessen the uh, perception of stress and anxiety. So getting um, a well-balanced meal around probiotics is going to help lessen some of your stress and anxiety. When we think about the Western diet, so this is increased salt, sugar, fat. So I don't know if you guys have ever been to a McDonald's outside of the United States and seen the difference. I don't know if you've been to certain restaurants outside of uh, the United States and seen the difference. We're using the most uh, when it comes to sugar, salt, and fat. And so really thinking about um, how to decrease that will help to manage some uh, symptoms of depression compared to those who are, for example, uh, Japanese diet or Mediterranean diets, they're mostly higher in vegetables, fruits, whole grains, and seafood, um, some of which were broken down a little bit earlier uh, between Eddie and Gloria's presentations. So we wanna make sure that we're not necessarily following the Western diet, but looking at how we can increase our vegetable, fruit, um, and whole grain and seafood. Consuming more foods that are higher in omega-3, like salmon, tuna, flax, or chi uh, chia seeds, dark green, and leafy vegetables also help to maintain a well uh, mental health. Foods with vitamin B regulate neurotransmitters. So how we're bringing in information 
and how it's going out. Um, those are usually like eggs, certain dairy products, poultry, and fish. Uh, Gloria talked about at the very end, getting out, right? We talked about the fact that we've been uh, stuck in the house, getting out and getting that vitamin D. That helps to, uh, to produce optimal brain function. Low levels are linked to depression, especially during reduced sunlight. So, you know, most people will say, oh, I have seasonal depression. I get, you know, when the sun starts going down earlier, when September comes, people start to feel a lot more moody. Um, they're tired a lot easier. And, um, and so one of the things is that we always want to kind of figure out how to create or how to build in that vitamin D. So there's a bunch of different ways that I can tell you there's, you know, all kinds of like uh, sunlight uh, machines that you could plug into your home. But how simple can it be if we just eat the right food, right? Instead of having to do all of these other things to try to figure out how to get that or constantly needing to go on a vacation that sometimes we can't all afford to be able to get that sunlight in the winter months. So you want to pay attention to how much vitamin D you're allowing your body to have. So get some sun. Consume fortified whole grain cereals, fish, and dairy products. This all helps with increasing the vitamin D. Uh, you can take vitamin supplements, but it's always better for your body if you go straight to the food. The food has all of the nutrients, all of the vitamins, everything that you need, not only to have, when we talk about the whole person, we're talking about the physical health, the mental health, the spiritual health. You want to eat what's from the earth. You want to eat what um, has been already put here for you, what you can grow. Um, a lot of people have used this COVID-19 um, who have the means to even grow some stuff of their own, whether it's herbs or, or vegetables, like tomatoes, you can actually grow in your house if you have the capabilities. So we want to make sure that not only are we putting, um, you know, the spiritual part of us into us, we want to make sure that we're actually eating and I love the I am what I eat because I always say that to people like you are what you eat. And so you want to make sure, again, that to maintain a physical, spiritual, mental, emotional health, that you're feeding your body that premium fuel because you're just as important as that expensive car. And Antoine gave me the five minutes, but I'm actually just about done. I did want to add that for people who have been experiencing uh, COVID-19 and again, the stay at home order, um, we see a lot of people kind of complaining and juggling between either overeating or under eating. And this also goes hand in hand, possibly with depression. It could also just be again, the access, right? You're closer to the refrigerator. Um, you know, you're not moving around as much outside in your commute or your travels, whether it's to the doctor or to work. Um, and so, you want to make sure also that you're paying attention to what your mental and physical body are doing to make sure that you're not mixing up depression with maybe some other body ailments. So you want to make sure that you're still getting to a doctor, speak to a nutritionist, again, one that preferably understands your culture um, and the kind of food that you're used to eating. And then also making sure that you uh, are getting some kind of mental health assessment or having conversations with mental health professionals um, I just think that overall, that's something that is super important for everybody, especially black and brown people, not only with COVID-19, but also, you know, things that are happening uh, racially in our country. We want to really make sure that we're paying attention to ourselves in the whole self and not just certain parts, but definitely eat right. And what you said, uh, Gloria, eat right and you'll be right. <laughs> so that um that actually concludes my part i'm open for questions and answers and i'll actually put in to the comment section a uh name of natasha ashley who is a a registered dietitian and nutritionist who uh gears her business towards helping women of color um who are dealing with dietary needs thank you very much thank you very much um ah yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> this is so funny. Thank you very much, Javon. Oh my God, this is so incredible. Thank you guys very much. Now, we have a couple of questions. And so I would just allow you to just jump in and answer whichever question you think you want to answer, okay? Um, whichever question you feel that you want to go with. Um, so this is for Eddie or, or Gloria or even Javon. So someone mentions here, I know that an individual's daily requirement for carbs are different. If you eat too much, your body turns that into excess fat. 
how do you find out how many carbs you need per day? And that is understanding uh, that is understand that each person has different body requirements, different requirements. But how was I? How am I supposed to know how much carbs I need to eat per day? Um, do you want to take it, or I just I just want to say one thing um, with regards to that. I know a lot of people are always concerned, especially in today's environment. People, it's um, low carb is trendy. Um, but I always like to say that if you eat like like we had talked about, um, if you eat whole foods and you eat like vegetables and fruits. Um, those carbs, I don't worry about. So if you eat a banana, I get this a lot of times question because people are always talking about the sugar content within a banana. And so I always like to say that when it comes to like take orange juice, for instance, right? You can easily drink eight, orange, eight oranges, which is typical to make like a glass of orange juice, mm -hmm. but you can't eat eight oranges. And that's because of the fiber in there. And so I'm always going to say like, you know, in terms, you always want to check with your dietitian because that will vary depending on your weight, size, age, gender, all these things matter in terms of de de determining your requirement. But on the whole, a good rule is if when you eat whole foods, um, you're usually in the safe zone. Um, and this is, of course, if you don't have existing conditions like diabetes um, or are obese. But, um, you know, when it when it comes to like the sugar in bananas, there's fiber in there, there's nutrients, there there's good stuff in there, and you shouldn't you know limit it unless, of course, um, you figured it out with your dietitian or your doctor that that's something you shouldn't have. Um, and that was the only two cents I wanted to give. But go ahead. Thank you very much, Eddie. Gloria. So, um, in in um, to go along with what Eddie was saying, that for example, with to form your, you want to know how many calories to eat. Some it depends on your calorie, on your activity factor, what exercise you do, your age, your your cultural background to find out what you eat. Say, for example, you're a person that loves to eat rice. I would say, okay, yes, you can have your rice, but have brown rice, and then watch the portion. That would be one third cup. That's 15 grams. So it's not to 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 talk about this the way the um the portion people always get scared and don't eat. So we really don't want that. We want them to have a balanced meal. It's not a diet or the calories. It's not counting calories. It's just to have a healthy meal. Thank you. Thank you, Gloria. Plus exercise, plus <laughs> water. <laughs> So I've got another question here um, that says fat soluble vitamins are absorbed better by the body if you eat healthy fats. So are they asking the question if fat soluble vitamins are absorbed better by the body if you eat healthy fats? Um, and then somebody asked a question also about pro are probiotics from supplements good? And then following up, what are good natural sources of probiotics? Who wants to take that? And I think because uh, I have a couple of questions for you, Javon, so hang on. So I think this might be for Eddie and um, Gloria. You want to play Gloria? Or... <laughs> okay, Eddie, you're going ahead. You're going, go ahead. Oh, all right. Uh, either one. I... Uh, I'll, I'll take, uh, I'll take, all right. The fast on vitamins, yes, they are absorbed better and digested in the body if you eat it with a fat, um, which is not an issue. So, for instance, if you eat like fish, um, if you eat uh, sometimes, uh, with, I don't know if you cook it with olive oil or you, you bake it or you roast it, um, eating fat with your fat soluble vitamins does help you absorb it better. So that's vitamin A. So if you eat carrots, sometimes I like to drizzle a little bit of avocado oil on top of them or whatever oil or fat you have. Or if you eat like a, a fatty fish and you have your carrots on the side, then that will help you, uh, absorb the vitamin A or the fat soluble vitamins in that. Um, Probiotics from supplements are okay, um, but I think as we have, uh, we probably said 20 million times, um, you can always, it's always best to eat, uh, get it from foods, right? You know, um, you can always take supplements, you know, with the guidance of your dietitian and doctor. But uh, I always like to say, you know, probiotics, can, you can eat yogurt. There's, uh, if you don't like dairy, there's, um, uh, there's sauerkraut, fermented foods. Uh, if you like kimchi, I don't know, that's not everybody's cup of tea. Um, but there are other ways to eat it. If you can't eat those things, 
um, then yeah, you could take the supplement and, and which ones are good will vary. Thank you. Thank you, Eddie. Yes, yes, Gloria. To add, I was I was adding, I'd say for alcohol use in the top of the list, right? Most people like to drink alcohol. So what I would say when it comes to mental health, alcohol is a depressant. So you drink that alcohol, you don't want to eat. You don't want to eat, other complications sets in. And you know, and then what happened? You said, I don't have any appetite to eat, so I'm going to smoke. So if you have those issues, what I, what I would suggest to my patient, because I can tell them, stop. You just say, for example, slowly. Change slowly. Mindful mm -hmm. eating. Mindful eating, because doing things for 30, 40 years, and then hear the dietitian up in your face, here's a meal plan, here's a menu, stop doing it. Mm -hmm. No, you have to work with the individual on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Gloria. We've got three can minutes to go. Yes, can yes. I just, can I just jump in on that? Because uh, I, I actually was just talking uh, recently with a client around, so I've done harm reduction groups. Mm -hmm. I don't believe in abstinence, um, especially when it comes to substance use, whether it's um, a hard substance or alcohol, um, because a lot of those programs are like, you have to stop right now, this minute. And that is actually very dangerous for people because again, when we think about that car, if, if I don't know if you guys have ever tried to just all of a sudden just change the oil or that you're using in your car or change the, the fuel, and all of a sudden your car starts kicking it a little bit different and it's, it's moving a little bit different, the same way with the car, our bodies can't handle, they will shut down on us if we just quickly remove something and throw something else in there. So even with uh, substance use, everything needs to kind of be a weaning off and then an adding in. And so that your body does not go kind of like into this shock. Um, so, you know, I just wanted, cause we didn't speak about any kind of alcohol intake, but that is, you know, part of it because that is something that again in COVID-19 people have definitely been uh, partaking a little bit more in. Right. Yeah. Okay. So we've got one minute to go. Any any final thoughts from um, from you guys? Uh, any, any comments? Any thoughts? I'm going to just post the links that I was talking about for Health Box in case you want to find out more and also our social media, media handles uh, in case you want to reach can out. You, can you can you do me a favor, Eddie? Yes. I'll send you, I'll put my email address in here. You send me those links. I will add them onto the slides, which I will then share with everybody. So they'll get okay. them. Fantastic. Okay, and if one more thing in regards to the health box, the, the farmer's just, market, the farmer's market, um, the one that it's are open now. On Jacoby, it's open, and the one for North Central at Mashulu at the train station, it is open every Wednesday starting Ju June 24th. Last Wednesday, it was open. We usually do, I usually set up a nutrition program there, and uh, we have a wellness program at the hospital. So, say, for instance, patients come in and they lost weight, and that's their incentive. If you lost five pounds or you make some behavior change, you get a five dollars head box. So it's like an incentive for them. And I realize it works. And even those diabetics, your A1C is high, you get a help box to get your fruits and vegetables. So you work on it. You're just slowly doing it. Everything that is done for it, smoking cessation program and all these programs, just slowly, bit by bit. And then they got their incentives, and it makes a huge change. All right. So here's here's here here is our our one person from Montreal. I think has a question, and uh, let's see how quickly we can answer this one. She said, "I have some challenges with alopecia areata, also not a spot baldness, and had this issue more so when I work for child welfare. I now work with students, so I'm less stressed. I have seen a dermatologist and exercise." but I have a few small spots that are not filling in. Could food intake also be a huge factor? Um, I'm just, uh, just want to say briefly as a bald, I don't know if you noticed, I don't have hair um, at all. Um, and so I, I, I just want to reiterate that it's important to talk to your doctor. It, I mean, food does play a big factor in a lot of things and how we feel 
in, in our bodies and our and and how we feel inside and outside. But um, it could also be another issue that we don't know about, and you may need like to get blood lab values to kind of figure out, you know, how everything's going on inside of your body that could could contribute to alopecia. Um, but food food has a potential to affect all these things, but I, I would want to make sure with a doctor that that is the specific uh, problem. Yes, follow up with your medical um, PCP and also stress can play a big, big factor, very big one. Yeah, I was going to... Yeah, I was going to add for Melissa or for anybody, um, whether on the panel, off the panel um, guest, that uh, mental health, again, is something that can, uh, one of the things that we do is when we assess people, we always ask them when's the last time that they've had a physical. Um, it's very important to be able to distinguish um, what's happening for them psychologically as opposed to what's happening for them physiologically or where they meet. So when... Black Lives Matter movement started a couple of weeks ago. I found myself every day with really bad cramps in my shoulders, you know, almost like a football player, like up to here. That's tension, that's stress. I'm holding it in my back. So the movement is important. Um, but also, uh, I know that you said that you had some stressful moments, Melissa. So making sure that you do speak to somebody, however that looks for you, um, is also important. Medical will take care of one thing, we have to take care of all the rest as well. Thank you. All yeah. right, so we good? How is oh, it? The dry red wine. Um, it's not an exception to the alcohol is depressant. It is alcohol, so it's still a depressant in our bodies. But that's not judgment. You can drink it, not drink it. Drink it. it. <laughs> it. Liberation, right? But, yeah. In moderation. Um, yeah, but uh, everything, but it, everything in moderation. Amen for that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we're now three minutes over seven o'clock. So thank you guys very much. We've we've had a really wonderful evening. Um, our next forum um, is next week, where we're talking about domestic violence. Okay. Um, so these are some resources we'll be sharing. So next week we are talking about behind closed doors, discussing domestic and intimate partner violence in lockdown. Okay. Um, so we'll be sharing these, these slides with everyone so that you can see some of the other upcoming um, discussion forum. So next week is discussed is uh, domestic violence. The following week, we're talking about the elderly LGBT people of color community. And then the following week, we're talking about trauma and uh, life after COVID or life when COVID becomes more stabilized. All right. So once again, thank you all very much. And it, this was incredible. Gloria, just imagine me reaching out and giving you a hug with a mask on and gloves. No, but I'm giving you a hug anyway. <laughs> Social distance. <laughs> okay. I'm not getting anything from you. So I'm giving you a hug with gloves and mask on. Okay. <laughs> Javon, thank you very much. Eddie, thank you very much. And I'm so grateful that you guys were able to join us and make this such a fantastic event. Okay. Be Thank well. You. Bye. Bye. Yeah, good night. All right. Good night. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Be well. Thank you. Bye. Bye.